on today's Men of the Apes, at some point, somebody will adapt Mark Miller properties correctly. Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Ape movies, one minute at a time. I'm Todd, flipping through his script pages across from me is Richard and Sean. Hey-o. For those people who don't know who Mark Miller is, tell them. Uh, he's a Scottish writer who created Wanted, Kick-Ass, Trooper's Legacy, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And I think besides Kick-Ass, nothing has really stayed very true to the source material. Uh, Kingsman. Oh, well, Kingsman, well, yeah. Well, it didn't say it well. I mean, I mean it was... The I mean, first, well, no, notoriety for Mark Miller would be Kick-Ass and, and Kingsman. Kingsman, yeah. yeah. Those are probably the two that hewed closest to the property. Yeah. So, when because when you said that, and when you got to Kick-Ass, I thought, well, at least I think I saw the first one. I don't remember if I saw the second, the second one. The second one wasn't very good. But I, the first one was a pretty good film. Yeah. Is it close to the source material? It's the... I think the probably the closest. Yeah. 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 And that's the same director as Kingsman. Yes. So they apparently have a they, good relationship. They're good friends, yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess you haven't read a lot of Mark Miller stuff. Mm-hmm. His books are are they're they're big, mm-hmm. they're explosive, fantastic, they yeah, very yeah. And he, he they're very uh, big ideas, big idea. And he, he kind of goes uh, a little bit of the Quentin Tarantino edge in terms of the dialogue and the okay. conversation between the characters and what the characters do. So a lot of his stuff is perfect for a movie adaptation mm-hmm. or a show adaptation. Mm-hmm. And Netflix like invested into this Miller World thing because he has multiple graphic novels out there, and their first launch was Jupiter's Legacy, and after a one season that's already been canceled and 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 all that kind of stuff, which is unfortunate because the stuff is great. Mm-hmm. But I only watched the first episode, and it was just eh. like it was not it was not the book, it was not as exciting in the yeah. book. I couldn't even finish the the I couldn't even think about watching the season. Hmm. Sorry, we're totally dying. Right. Totally. Anyways, no, it's okay. I mean, we we've always said that this is about. Planet of the A's, but the three of us are pop culture nerds that love talking all this stuff. So I at least knew Jupiter's Legacy. I, I had not gotten to it. I've said many times how tired I get of just superhero stuff. And I'd seen so many things of the, you know, alternate takes, boys, Vincible, that, that are kind of deconstructing what that is. And I like those. And so I saw this stuff that this is another one, one of those I just don't have time for it right now. So I never got to it. And now I won't. Yeah. Well, and, and, well and, and knowing that it's canceled just basically Doesn't killed matter, people wanted yeah. to check it out and yeah. exactly. together. Exactly. I know? thought it was so weird to only how, how long ago did this come out? And like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, not very long ago. I was like, this is, yeah. I, if I, I wait six months at least. To see so, what's going to happen? Yeah, to see if Do it may be. Really? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not saying me. If I'm Netflix, oh, I wait six at months. At least to oh. announce a cancellation so you get yeah. eyes on it, yeah. It and you never weird. know if it's not going to build somehow or well, something. Well, so, you know, the, the, the speed with which it was canceled after a season makes you, well, you know, now to your point, is there something else that happened behind the scenes Must that we been. don't know about? And usually that would come from a property being bought by somebody else like a Disney and at Netflix going, Hey, you know what? Screw you guys. We're, we're, right. we're not going to do any more in this, you know? Yeah. So maybe, maybe that's something, maybe there's something that happened. He sold a, a movie or a property to somebody else and they're pissed at him and they decided to cancel it. I don't know. Very possible. Okay. Yeah. So let's shift gears. Yes. Let's talk apes. We are at minute 48. Sean, 48. tell us what's going on. We start minute 48 with Lisa asking about preparations for battle and ends with Caesar stating that freaks are different. Freaks are different. Here we come. Mm-hmm. Minute 48 mm-hmm. battle. For the Planet of the Apes. Well, every sort of preparation to break that off? Because unlike the humans in our city, those in the Forbidden City are mad. Mad enough not to want peace and friendship, but enmity and war. Did they tell you that? Oh, yes. Yes. By opening fire on us without giving us a chance to explain. You were trespassing on their territory. But, Lisa, we didn't know the city was inhabited. But but how, if you didn't speak to them? Do you know its inhabitants are mad? Oh, Lisa, you didn't see them. They're, um... Oh, 
they're malformed. Like the freaks in your foster father's circus? Were they mad? What's malformed? Cornelius, go to bed. What I'm doing, Ricky, is water. These are freaks are different. As of minute 48, we have a village's worth of apes and humans plus a ghost city worth of radioactive peat. People. I, I let my sorry. Just apologies to the audience. I let last minute bleed into this minute <sighs> that last week's discussion. So no, I mean there's a discussion. So I, I don't think there's any apology to that. I think that sometimes it's one of the things that I've tried to say so many times while we're doing this. Sometimes you can't talk about one minute. You almost have to go. Here's the context of where this is going. What's intended. So we, we kind of talked about Lisa's questions, and and I recently said to a friend about a uh, mayor of East Town that's on HBO. He asked me if I'd watched it. I have. What do you think of it? I thought it was really good. I didn't think it was as good as everybody else says it is. We're we're, we're not. In, we're only interested because Gene Smart's. In it. <laughs> I love Gene Smart, and I think Kate Winslet. Did you hear what her choice was of why she looks so downtrodden in that? Mm-mm. She she said, "I will no longer take films or television projects where they want to make me Hollywood beautiful." She said, "I'm done with it. That's not interesting. That's not the way real people are." And she said, I'm an actress. And that's why the, the love scene with Guy Pierce, where she's wearing a bra, but you can tell she's not wearing bottoms of any type. You can see her tummy. And they're all like, right, let's do a different camera angle. And she's like, hell no, do that one. And I really respect people like that that want to be honest. So I think it's good. There were times where my mom was like, eh, I can almost just predict this 100%. The reason I bring it up, the one thing I told a friend that I do think it does well is, you know, dialogue in films sometimes has to be staged to the point where someone's asking a conversation that the audience needs to ask. And that's what Lisa is right now. She's that vessel for us to help us understand. And to that point, she asks the right question. She does. does. I mean, yeah, and I appreciate that, that, that this 100% that she's challenging his thoughts. And I almost wish though, that we saw Cornelius realizing, I'm sorry, Caesar realizing he was lying. Because he doesn't know. He's trying to justify. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to justify all this, and she exposes that he doesn't. He didn't have a conversation with them. Yeah, he was too busy hosing them down. They just got shot at. Yeah, and because they got shot at, he walked down a corridor looking at some of them, Mm -hmm. and he got shot at. We have no idea what these people are like at all. Yeah, some people got some acne, and he thinks they're freaks. And and I I (laughs) love. I love. And she goes, "God damn." She's like asking you were trespassing on their territory. Uh-huh. But, but if I never if you didn't spoke to them, how do you know the if you didn't speak to them, how do the you know the inhabitants are mad? She's asking all the right questions and you, you haven't seen them, but they're you know, he says that you haven't seen them, they're malformed. Like the freaks in your fault, were they mad? Like like malformed does not make you crazy. Yeah, I mean, she, I know. she points that out right. to him. It you, was so so I just loved her in this moment. You didn't moment. see them. They were morbidly obese. Well, that doesn't make them mad. Well, when we're when the word you know, when freaks comes out, first yeah. off, the first thing you think, geez, is that the correct term to use? But uh-huh. at the same time of that time, freaks would have been acceptable. But what I almost wished she had done was to say there would have been a time when you were a freak. You were the ape that could speak. Yeah. You know, we we can't look upon people and think because they're different or something. You need something more than this. And I, again, I kind of wish she'd gone a little further. What well, and pushed him? So what they what they did here is they 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 cut the end of the conversation by having Cornelius interrupt. What's malformed? And so Lisa say Cornelius go to bed. So that's how they end this conversation, yeah. as opposed right. to taking it to a deeper place. Because right. I was going to ask, okay. it, would, it would have led to a little bit of an argument, particularly when he says, and it's Roddy's choice for Caesar to go, Lisa. You haven't seen them. He puts a tone on that I'm like, oh, that's condescending. No shit. I would have smacked him right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, well, it, I mean, I hate to keep referencing other things, but I was watching something about Galaxy Quest last night, mm-hmm. and Justin Long, is that that kid's yeah. name, was talking about the choice of how you say things. And there's, I, I haven't seen that film in forever, but the documentary came out. I thought, I'll watch this. And he said, whenever they ask him his name, he he said there was no question mark in the script. I think his I can't remember his name, like Andrew. He goes, um, Andrew, <laughs> and it makes it funny. And he said that you know that he was like, that's acting one hundred and one is your choice of interpretation. And I thought the same thing with Roddy. I was like, if I spoke to my wife that way. <sighs> I'd, I, I'd get my ass kicked. But but it was a choice, and it's a great it's a it's great a choice to use because I cringed. Choice. I cringed when yeah. you said that. It's like, oh, oh so here yeah. comes the fight. It's perfect. But I also like the way that um, Natalie 
trendy says the line towards Cornelius, go to bed because every parent in the I was about world to say, has is that had the that... kid that comes sneak I just want to get a glass of water. And <laughs> that's what Cornelius basically like, Yeah, have you given Ricky's water? Like, yeah, th- I, this is what I'm doing. I mean, it's... and you know that but th- that's the thing. You know they're full of shit. They're trying to listen and but I love the fact that she didn't soft pedal that. It really was a go, go to bed. So, is <laughs> get <it> out. It's <laughs> Cornelius's purpose in here just to again emphasize malformed and also to end their conversation. I mean, what, if if he wasn't in the scene, what would happen? What would be different? I, I we well, we can't talk about future minutes. No, no, we can't. But I mean, it it really is a setup for what's going to happen next. Okay, uh, it's setting at least a, a, a set of things that we need him present so he can be a part of something. But oh. I do think that the best conversations in the world are. We may have two people talking, but there's a third element bringing tension to it. Well, I, and and it, I think he does that. He it's at least that we have to be parents in conscience. Well, well that's, that. yeah. I think I think I think his purpose here is that when you have a conversation between two parents and a child interrupts and suddenly the conversation has to change. Yeah, and that's what I think his point. I think it's a very. I think this is it, despite the the subject matter. I think it's a very real conversation in the way it was put together. I, I do was, too. I applaud this particular this uh, dialogue and so on. I mean, I, we can all sit here and say we wish it had gone further. And I think when you say that, sometimes you're like, "This is so close to being on point." That mm-hmm. I'm like, "Oh, just give me just that little bit more." I I also think that we clamored for moments of intercut stuff before when we were in the Dead City and we wanted to see Ape City again. I think that this is kind of like that. This is more to what we wanted, yeah. Yeah, we want to see those elements that don't just disappear until we need them. He exists in this world. He's a child. Mm -hmm. He he may be an adult in makeup that's acting like a child, but he's a child. And he comes in. He gets in the way. He provides conflict between them, and he shuts down the conversation. I I like your... Sean, your example of the child coming in with a glass of water, and he's uh-huh. asking for, for for to give Ricky water. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, that'd be something that a child would do yeah. when they're trying to go to bed and they don't really want to go to bed, and they're kind of fussing oh, around. No, they get up and they walk Ricky up one. and they peer around. And the parents are in the room. I mean, say my nieces do it all the time. Yeah, you know, hey, I need some water. Hey, I need this. Uh huh. Hey, this is happening. Anybody that's ever dealt <laughs> with kids <laughs> pop what? up, then they disappear, then they pop back up. <laughs> Whether that's bed, nieces, okay. nephews, grandchildren, children, you know that that's that constant testing of what is the rule? What can I do? And they're going to push. They're going to push. Bedtime like, is it not bedtime? And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in bed. I've been in bed for 20 minutes, but I want to come in and talk to you guys for a and, second. And I know Shelly doesn't listen to this, so I can say that is the <laughs> one thing that as a mother she fails at. Those she early days. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, it was from the early days when when Abby, you know, when you first have a child, they'll sleep in your room because you need to be attentive to so much. But there comes that point when you have to put them aside. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Shelly's like, go get my baby. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that kid stays, you know, and, and, and to this day, even when Abby's around and Abby's 18, about to go to college, Shelly's very indulgent. And I'm yeah. like, you can't do that. You know, you're not doing her any favors. Well, you know, I watching, you know, being with my sister and her husband watching the nieces, there were definitely times where I'm like, I felt like my um, sister and brother-in-law were being unnecessarily cruel, but they weren't. They're being firm. Yeah. But it's just kind of hard. Yeah. It's kind of hard to watch sometimes when the child just won't lay down when it's right. time for bedtime and they just want to stay up and cry. Now, granted, the uncles were there, so they probably wanted to hang out with the uncles. Yeah. But it was it was tough to watch parents being stern, but they had to be. That's their job. That's, that's <laughs> the weirdest thing about being a parent. You're not their friend. Uh-huh. You're there to basically say, I love you so much that I'm going to set boundaries for you that sometimes suck and they don't seem and, fair. And sometimes they aren't fair. Yeah. And and I know they're not exactly equivalent, but it's like it's similar to whenever you go over to a friend's house and they have a dog and you're like, oh, da, 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 and mm-hmm. you're loving on it. And the, the owner comes out and goes, no, eh, don't do that. You're yeah. like, OK, okay. But, but you also know that person has a history in yeah. this that they're trying to teach them a discipline of something. And and I think that the weird thing for so many of us, even as a person who has a kid, when I go around somebody with their kids, I'm like, oh, shit. Shit, you know, but yeah. the truth is that's their that's gig. It. So at this moment, let's get it back to apes. No. That's Lisa's gig. Maybe Cornelius is a great infringer upon the, hey, can I stay up and have a glass of water? Right. Or can Ricky have some water? So I'm trying not to spoil the last movie, but I'm wondering how much the and the last movie, the next trilogy. Um, yeah, knowing, don't spoil it. Yeah, knowing yeah, what I, I, know I know about nothing. it. I know nothing. Knowing about characters that are in it, I'm wondering if they... T- What's going to happen in this movie, mm-hmm. and if they took elements of it and folded it into that third movie? As so, here's where I have to set the whole stage again for the three of us. 
I have seen every one of these stinking films far too many times. Richard has seen the originals plus the Tim Burton, but not the new. Sean has never seen these originals. Mm. He's seen Tim Burton and he's seen the new. So yeah. that's the reason why this comes up. So I will tell you. We have to be nebulous about who knows what. It's. 